Welcome to the Brass and Woodwind Shop. I have a clarinet in my shop that is here for a repad, and while I have all the keys off, I'm going to clean the body. Clarinets can tend to get dirty underneath where the keys are, so whenever I have the keys off the clarinet, that is a good time to wash the body and clean it up. I'm in my instrument cleaning room. I have a small container and I put water in that. And now I'm going to put the clarinet in there. And it is safe to put plastic clarinets into water. You do not want to put wooden clarinets directly into water, but with plastic clarinets it's okay. I'm going to leave the clarinet to soak in there for a few minutes and I'll be back. It is a few minutes later and time to get the clarinet out of the water. I have a few different sizes of brush that I'm going to use. I'm going to turn on the water, clean out the bore of the instrument. Then I need to clean out the tone holes. And I do that with a mouthpiece brush for a brass instrument. It works well for clarinet tone holes too. And when you're doing this job, you need to be careful not to get poked by the springs, because those springs can be very sharp. So you have to be careful to avoid the springs. And also I take the brush and clean next to the springs. When I clean this area of the clarinet where all the dirt builds up, I brush it this way and not this way so that it cleans it better and also it avoids uh, pulling the strings back. And then also get underneath the thumb rest, a lot of uh, dirt and grime builds up there too. Okay, that's it for this one. Now for the upper joint, pretty much the same way of cleaning that. And then the tone holes. The register tone hole is very small and the mouthpiece brush will not fit into there. So I have a smaller brush I use for that. And if you do not have a smaller brush, you can use a pipe cleaner too. This tone hole is important to clean because that one does affect the sound more than the other tone holes. And then the bell section is easy. And so is the barrel. Then rinse it all off when you're done. If you're cleaning a wooden clarinet, you can use some Murphy's Oil Soap. You pour a fairly generous amount into there and then add water. Then you can put the clarinet into there. You do not want to put wooden clarinets directly into water because that will take away the oils from the clarinet and it will make it shrink. Then you let it soak for a few minutes and you clean it the same way that you did the other clarinet. The only difference is you do not use water when you're cleaning this. After you're done cleaning the clarinet, you, you rinse it out in the soap and then you have to dry it off by hand. The soapy surface makes the clarinet a little harder to dry off, but you still can dry it off. It just takes a little longer. Now it's time to dry the clarinet. What you'll need is a t-shirt type material to dry off the main part of the body and a flute cleaning rod with a rag on it to clean up the inside of the clarinet and a cotton swab to clean up inside of the tone holes. Also you need a pipe cleaner to clean up inside of the posts where the hinge rods and pivot screws go. The bell and the barrel are very easy to clean up. You just put the cloth through there and then dry it off with the rag. Also inside the socket of the barrel there's a little ledge and that tends to get very dirty. So put your finger in the cloth and turn that around and usually you'll find a lot of junk that is in there. That's about all there is to cleaning up a barrel of a clarinet. The bell is easy too. The bell also has a little ledge in there that you need to clean up. That's about all there is to cleaning up a bell of a clarinet. The body of a clarinet is a little harder to clean. You need to be careful for the needle springs because those can poke you. When you're drawing next to a needle spring, see which direction the needle spring points and go at it from the other direction. If you go at it from the same direction that it points, you'll probably end up getting your finger poked. So go at it that way. And then there's a needle spring here. You would go alongside of it that way. And just clean up the body of the clarinet or dry the body of the clarinet until it is dry. When you're drying up next to the posts, Take the rag and put it over two fingers like this. 
and then dry the post like that. Dry in between all of the posts that way, on both sides. The only place it's hard to get that way is underneath where the springs are. When you're doing this job for the first few times, you probably will get poked by the springs, but once you do it for a while, you get a feel for where the springs are and you learn to avoid them. After you've cleaned up the surface of the clarinet, then you need to clean up the tone holes. And there are two parts of the tone hole that you need to clean up. The inside the tone hole, where it goes into the bore of the clarinet, and also the little ridge around the tone hole. How you clean up around the ridge of the tone hole is take your pinky and put the rag over it like that, and use your fingernail to clean up inside of the little ridge on the tone hole and do that with all of the tone holes. To clean inside the tone holes, use a cotton swab. I finished cleaning the bore of the clarinet, the surface, the tone holes both inside and out, and around the posts. The last thing to do is use the pipe cleaner. And the pipe cleaner is used on the register vent. Also, the pipe cleaner is used for the little holes inside of the posts. And it's very important that you clean these out because if there's any water left on these when you put the clarinet back together, the hinge rods and the pivot screws are going to get rusty and it's going to make the keys stick. So you need to go through and clean out all of the posts. The body of the clarinet is all cleaned and dried now. When you have all the keys off of the clarinet, now is the time to buff the posts and the keys and all the metal parts of the clarinet. Also, if you're going to replace the tenon corks, now is the time to do that. This customer did not want me to do that because the corks work fine even though they look a little old. Look in the description below for links to the videos on replacing tenon corks and also the video on buffing clarinet keys. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos.